Hello, my name is Anna Vizaraga, and I'm going to show you how I use the pottery forming technique of coiling to make a vessel. This method uses clay that's been formed into a rope or snake-like shape, and these shapes are layered one on top of each other and they're carefully joined together. This allows for the possibility of creating vessels that have thicker walls, which makes it easier to create larger pieces. It's a method that's been used for thousands of years all over the world, it continues to be a method that's used by many people all over the world to create vessels that people use for cooking, for storing food such as grains, or for storing liquids such as oil or water. Let me show you what you might find helpful to have when you're working on this project. First of all, you're going to want to be able to have access to some kind of flat surface that maybe you can cover it um, with a piece of fabric or um, possibly really heavy paper, but fabric is really best if you can. The next thing that I think is really important is either a small piece of board. This is about eight inches by about um, six inches. It can even be smaller or uh, some kind of stiff piece of fabric. This is a piece of canvas. It's about that same size or a piece of uh, stiff drawing paper. What you're going to use this for is when you go to work on your piece, you're going to want some way to turn it around without actually touching it with your hands so you're less likely to distort it. So that's what that is for. And a fork. You're going to use that for scoring or scratching the surface of the clay in order to join it or perhaps to add texture to the exterior. Some kind of wooden paddle is really helpful. Uh, maybe you can look in your kitchen, see what you might have. Something that doesn't, that's not sealed, it would be less likely to stick to your, to your clay. You're gonna be using it to paddle on the clay really gently to help you change the form of the piece. And the last tool I recommend is a tool that I actually made. It's a rib and it's made out of an old gift card, a real flexible plastic gift card. And you can see that it at one time was a, a rectangular shape. And I just cut this arch shape out and left this straight edge here. And you can see how when I bend it, it takes on a different shape. And this is really helpful when you're trying to join your coils together and smoothing your piece out or perhaps even changing the shape of it. So some kind of work surface that you can move, wooden paddle, a fork, and a rib, and your hands, and of course some clay. We need a base for our piece beginning, the starting point. I'm going to take a smallish piece of clay just going to form it into a ball in my hand, just patting it and turning it. And I'm just going to flatten it out and gently push it, working my way around in a circular fashion. I'm doing it, I'm making it a piece, a base, that's going to be circular because I want to make a piece that's circular as well. I'm going to leave the base about a quarter of an inch thick, so pretty thick. If I want to, I can roll it on the work surface. That helps to flatten that out and keep it thick. Or I can use my paddle and I can paddle the edges to keep it even. I can place it on the work surface. Hands. So 
I'm going to show you a more traditional way to start coils and then I'll show you a different way that you can make coils as well. I'm going to take a lump of clay in my hand and I'm forming it, pressing it down just so that it's about the same thickness all the way throughout. You can see it's a cylindrical shape already and I'm going to place it in my hands and I'm going to roll it in my hands and I'm going to push at the same time with my hands. I'm going to push my hands together. So I'm going to roll down at this very bottom and you can see it's starting to form a coil. I'm going to let that coil drop down. Okay, so I've made my first coil. I'm going to show you another way to start a coil. Again, I'm starting off with a cylindrical shape. I'm going to squeeze it in my hands and get it as close to a cylindrical shape as I can, as close to that rope shape as I can. Turning it, squeezing it. Then I'm going to put it down on my work surface. And I'm going to start with the tips of my fingers and I'm going to press and roll all the way through my hand. You can see I'm rolling, I'm pushing with my fingers a little bit and then I press down with this part of my hand all the way to here and then I press down rolling back so it's back and forth. And as I roll forward, back where my hand kind of slides over to the different part of the coil. Now if it's flopping around, one of the things that you can do is you can take one end and twist it a little bit away from you and take the other end and twist it towards you. And oftentimes this really helps with the co making the coil, getting the coil back to the, uh, more of a cylindrical shape. So it really doesn't have to be a perfect cylindrical shape. What's important is that it have some thickness to it. And especially if this is the first time that you're making a coil pot, I really recommend that you work with a piece of clay that's at least the thickness of your thumb. I'm gonna begin by adding my first coil onto the base of the piece. You can see that this piece of clay is um, pretty long and that if I were to wrap it around this particular shape, that it would be a little bit on the long side. Now, if I want to make a piece that's symmetrical, I'm going to work one layer at a time. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my hands and they're going to help. I'm going to use my hands and they're going to be going along the edge of this base. And I'm going to use my thumb and I'm going to line the coil up. And then I'm going to turn it up a little bit and pinch off any extra. Then I'm going to pull part of it off. And I'm going to begin by attaching the piece, the coil, onto the base. So I'm going to use my thumb, either my thumb or my index finger or my middle finger, and I'm going to join that piece of clay, that very end of that cylinder, down on to the base. And then I'm going to use my hand, and this is how I work almost all the, all the time. I'm going to use my hands just like this. I'm going to support the back of the clay, but the support the back of the area, rather, that I'm working on. So you can see my hand is cupped around this curve. And I'm gonna use my finger and take a, press just a little bit of that clay down on to the base. You can see I turn my wood, turning it to make it easier to work on. You can see these pieces of clay are coming together and there's a little bit of a gap there, but I can just take this, my finger, and kind of just move it over there ever so gently and then I'm going to take my thumb and I'm going to or whatever finger feels comfortable and smooth it out. Again my hand's going to go behind the area that I'm working on and usually what I'll do is the spot where the two coils come together I take really a lot of care putting that together so I will smooth it out and I'll press it not really pinching it but kind of press it together smooth it out on the outside too and that way I know that it's really joined together really well and there's not a gap in there. I usually like to go ahead and smooth the piece out as I go along. If you wait till you have two or three coils stacked on top of each other before you join them together, it's usually a little bit more difficult to smooth it out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach this out, the coil 
on the outside of the pot. So you can see I'm going to use my fingers. And you can see my finger marks. I can use my fingers to smooth it out if I like. One of the things you want to think about that's really important is you want there to be some surface area for the next coil to rest on. So this needs to be a little bit on the thick side. You don't want it too thin. And so the paddle can really help you. You can pat it very gently, kind of even it out and flatten it out enough so that there's a flat area for the coil, next coil, to rest on. And I can take my fingers and my hand, and it helps me to guide the clay because I can feel that wall. Again, it gets to the, to the end of one coil and the beginning of the other, and I'm just going to pull a piece off. I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. I'm going to leave that. And again, I'm going to attach that piece of clay, that end of that coil, onto the edge right here. And then I'm going to begin again, drawing that piece of clay down, turning with the wood. And this is how I'm going to work. This is the process that I'm going to use the whole time I'm working. And you can see that that's a little bit too big, it overlaps a lot. I'm going to just pinch it off twist it off. Now again, if you want your piece to be symmetrical, same on all sides, this is the way that you would work. One layer of coils at a time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this rib and I'm just going to put my hand behind the area that I'm going to work on and I'm going to smooth this area out. I'm going to draw and scrape up the edge you can see you get a little bit of clay there. Just clean it off. Bending it just ever so slightly and pulling it and rubbing it up the side of the wall. Sometimes I'll go up and sometimes I'll go around. You can, you can see how it smooths it out. But again, always placing my hand behind the area I'm working on because that helps to support it and it's less likely to deform. Paddle the top, let it get ready. For the next layer, for the next coil. I'm going to attach this coil. I'm going to use my fingers, feel along the wall. But you see that I have this little space here, and I need to fill that in. So I'm going to take a piece of clay, a smaller piece of clay, and I'm going to push it up against that end of that piece. I'm going to blend it into the clay by smoothing it out. I'm going to kind of turn it up. I'm sort of very gently pushing it in there and you can see this piece of clay sticking up. I'm going to twist it and turn it and I'm going to, just like I did with the pieces below, with the coils below, I'm going to smooth that out. So now I'm going to add the next coil. I'm going to add it just a little bit differently just so that you can see how many options, how different, many different ways there might be for you to add the coil on or how you might use your hands to do that. Everybody. And I'm going to smooth that coil down onto the piece below. And I'm going to use my thumb. I'm going to hold this coil up. And I'm going to use my thumb and take that a little bit of the clay and the coil and add it on to it. I'm doing the same thing. It just looks a little bit different. I'm using my hand here to support the clay and then I'm using my thumb to spread or push that little bit of clay down from that coil onto the piece below. And then I'm going to get to the end here. I'm going to twist that little bit off. I'm going to treat it the same way. I'm going to smooth it out. Take what I'm going to do now is you might wonder how, does, how do I make my pot go out. You can see how I'm holding my hand at an angle. My fingers at an angle. I can take my fingers and I can gently coax or pull the clay out. And then very gently, I'm not really pinching it, I'm just kind of like tapping it a little bit or pulling it ever so gently. And you can see how it's kind of gone out. And one of the things you'll want to check for 
is to make sure that your clay coils are attached on well. If you can pull on the piece and it comes off, it's not attached very well. So if you want your piece to stay together, you need to take care with how you work. It's, it's really easy to make the piece grow out. It's a little bit more difficult for it to come in. So one of the things that I think is really important is that you, you'll get to a certain point and your, your piece will feel maybe a little wiggly, feels like maybe it might collapse, or go ahead and get it ready for the next coil. And then I'm gonna let it set up. I'm gonna let it firm up, I'm gonna let it dry just a little bit so it's not quite so wiggly like this. I'm gonna use this paddle and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pat it. You see how I'm holding it at an angle? I'm not holding it straight up, I'm holding it at an angle. And I'm gonna pat the clay and you can see how it's going in a little bit there. So I'm gonna turn the wood or turn your work surface and you can see if I hold it at an angle, the clay is going to turn towards the direction that I'm paddling it. Paddling it. So, so it's going in. If you can hear, I'm not hitting it really hard. I'm hitting it really gently. And I'm trying to paddle it all the way around real evenly. And oftentimes when I'm working on a piece, I don't just stand in one place. I actually move around the room. I'll move back and I'll take a look at it, turn my piece, because it is a three-dimensional piece. It's not flat. So um, if you get up or move away from your piece of pottery that you're making, you get a better idea of what it actually really looks like. Because if you're standing up over it, you're really only seeing this portion of it. But if you stand away and you step away and you turn it around and you take a look you can see maybe the areas that you may want to ch might want to change. So don't just stay in one spot. Move around. Or... Now I can see that the pot is starting to, the sh a shoulder is starting to form on it. Again, I'm going to use my thumb. I can lay this down here. Now it's becoming more difficult to see inside the pot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my fingers in there and put my hand around that shoulder and I'm gonna really think about, imagine what it looks like inside there and try to smooth it out and try to make sure it's all joined together. Again, my hand is, it's cupped around that shoulder part of the piece and I'm blending the clay together. Again, I'm gonna check and see if I can pull the coil off because if I can, it's not attached well. I'm gonna use my rib to join that coil on the outside. I'm gonna put my hand inside the pot and it's gonna be holding it up because if I don't hold it up, you can see how it presses it down. So I'm gonna pick it back up, turn it. So what I'm doing with my rib is really a lot like what I was doing with my fingers, using it like this. Instead of my finger, it's the rib, the end of that rib. Again, always, like I keep saying, your hand behind the area that you're working on to support it. This clay that I'm going to make my next coil with is much more wet than this piece. You can see it's very hard for me to push it in. And so if you've waited a while to work on your piece and it's set up a lot, and this is what you'll do, is you'll take your fork and you'll score the edges. You can see I'm roughing it up pretty good. I have to dip my fingers in the water and I'll just dab them on the edges. Not a lot of water. I'm going to scratch it up again. And what I'm doing is I'm making a, sort of a slurry, what we call a slip, a combination of water and clay that's used 
like a glue. You can see the indentions allow a place for the water to go and then I can scratch the surface up and you can see how kind of messy looking it is. You can also make a slip out of dry clay and water. You could just put some in a little container, but I'm just doing this right on the surface. Again, I'm just wanting to rehydrate that clay a little bit. And just like with all the other coils, I'm going to place it using my fingers to help guide where I want the clay to go. Now because the clay is so hard, or much more firm than when I was using wet clay on a totally wet body of the piece. Now I'm going to take my fork and I'm going to score the exterior. You can see I'm drawing it down pretty scratching into the piece right below it. Again, I'm still putting my hands behind the area that I'm working on. Gives me some support still. It's a little bit extra there. And now I'll take my rib. Clean it off. Clay is nice and stiff now, and I can actually use my rib to smooth it even more. I can turn it on its side because it's so firm, and I can scrape the sides and get those really nice and smooth so that I can be ready for the next. part here is a really, you know, it's a real sharp edge. And I can take my paddle and I can smooth that out and then it helps to round the bottom just a little bit. So it's not quite as a severe of an edge on the very bottom. So I'm going to make that last coil. It's going to make the neck and it's going to make the lip of the piece. Okay. And I do this a little bit differently. I make my coil. Same way. But I make it a little thicker. And then what I'm going to do is instead of keeping it round, I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to press it. I'm going to go down the coil. And I'm flattening it. You can see I'm flattening it out. See it's a little more round still here, but it's flatter here. I flatten it out, and I take it and I tap it on the side, that side, and I flip it and I tap it on that side so it has a nice flat edge, and then I'm going to go ahead and flatten it again, taking my hand, gently pressing as I go down the coil, flattened coil. The shoulder is still really soft, and if I were to build, or if I were to join on it right now, it's going to collapse in a little bit. So again, I'm going to have to stop, I'm going to have to let it rest set up 15-20 minutes maybe and then I can work on it. If I were to do it now it'd probably go collapse inward. So I just have to wait. There's a lot of that when you're making pottery. You just have to be patient. Use my fingers. Okay. Do you see how that clay overlaps this piece of clay? Now I can do this while it's sitting up here on the pot, or I can pick this up and move it down onto the surface, which might be a little bit easier. And I'm going to take this, and I'm going to cut through both of these pieces, and you can see I'm holding, I'm not holding it straight, not perpendicular to it, but at an angle. And I'm going to cut through both of those flat coil pieces. I'm going to pull that extra piece off. I'm going to pull the extra piece off there and you can see they line up and they fit together really nicely. I'm going to place it back up here 
one here, take a look inside. I'm going to just pull that off. I'm going to join this, and usually I use my finger and I go down, you know, sweeping motion downward to join the coil, but in this case I'm going to use my finger and bring it up, only because it's easier. I'm going to use my fork, join these two pieces together. I'm going to score or scratch the side of that coil, and I'm going to scratch the other side. I'm going to take a little bit of that slip or the clay that's mixed with a little bit of water. You could use just a little bit of water. And then watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to line them up and I'm going to push them together and you'll see that the slip kind of oozes out, kind of squishes out. That's a good indication that I've made a good good connection. Now if I want to I can use my, my fork and I can join the coil together this way onto the body, join the neck of the piece onto the body with like that. Or, I can use the rib. Or, I could use my finger. Okay. Smooth it out. So now I'm going to take my finger and and I'm going to use it, and if you watch what happens to the clay right over here where my finger is, you can see I'm stretching it out just a little bit. You can see how it's changed shape. And I'm going to do that all the way around. Trying to use the same amount of pressure, moving ever so slightly. That's one way you can even it out. And you could keep working on this for quite some time until you get it to where you want it. And I'm pretty satisfied with that for right now. If you're not able to have access to a kiln to fire your piece, I recommend using this process to finish your piece. I want to add some pattern to the outside of this piece and it's had a good chance to set up and dry. I can tap it with my fingers, it doesn't distort, it's really at a good place where I can begin to work on the exterior. Now I use a couple of different tools when I do this. I'm going to be scratching into the surface of the clay and so sometimes I'll use a, uh, a dull pencil or maybe an old pen. One of the things I like to think about is what's the use, what's the purpose of this pot? Might there be a use for it? As I said before, people made pots to store grains, liquids, many things. And oftentimes, you might see an indication on the exterior of the pot as to what it might be used for. I'm going to imagine that my pot is going to be used to carry water. So maybe on the exterior part of the pot, I might give some kind of indication, some idea about what this pot might be used for. And so I think I'm going to make some lines that to me look like they could be running water. Maybe you can think of a use or a purpose for your pot. And think about the different lines, patterns, images that you might want to scratch in to the surface of your pot. I'm ready for my next step on the exterior of this pot. I have some white clay here that's dried and then I'm going to crush. You'll notice that it's a very different color from the clay that I used to build my piece. So I'm going to use this thick slip 
again, it's just water and clay. So I'm gonna take it, and I'm gonna paint it over the surface of my clay. This white slip that I made, or this contrasting slip that I have on this pot, is now set up and it's not wet anymore. You can see it doesn't come off in my hands. So now I can take my scraper tool that I made, and I'm gonna very gently go over that area where the texture was. It's gonna expose those lines that I carved into You can see I'm gently scraping. If you scrape too much, you scrape the pattern away. But if you can wait for it to be really dry, it works really well. I'm using my rib to gently scratch the surface of the clay and it's picking up the slip that's sitting on the very surface and leaving the slip that's in the incised lines. Once it's dried for about a week and it's completely dry, bone dry, you can take watered down Elmer's glue or white glue and paint it on the surface of the piece and it'll help to seal the piece. While it will never be as strong as a fire piece, it'll last for a little while. I'm going to show you another way that you can treat the surface of your piece. Now when we work with clay, the clay is wet. And then as it dries, it reaches the stage that we call leather hard, where the piece looks like it's wet, but it's really not, it's quite stiff. And it's at a point really where you can't add any other clay pieces to it without uh, risking uh, those pieces popping off. And then once it's completely dry, it's called bone dry. And that's when your piece is its most fragile and it's very easy to break your piece. So if you wanna to try to burnish your piece, you really wanna get it, um, you wanna work on it at this leather hard stage. And how you burnish is you take a smooth stone or a spoon. Some people even use pieces of leather. Um, but this is a method that's been used for thousands of years to seal pots when it's also can be used in a, in a really in a decorative way. So you can see what I'm doing. So I'm taking my stone and I'm just letting it go over the surface of the pot. I'm not pushing down hard. I'm just letting the stone do the work. And you can see how the color is changing. And how there's a slight sheen to the piece. Now I've got the exterior of this piece burnished. I could keep burnishing it for quite some time. I used my old pen to just carve through that shiny area. So I can scratch in the surface before I burnish it, or I can scratch in it after I burnish it. The piece that I looked at as a source of inspiration for this is located in the Carlos Museum in the African Collection. It's a vessel that's known as the Makonde water vessel. It's a coiled piece of pottery that was built to hold water. This particular vessel was constructed and finished in a very similar way to the Makonde water vessel. It was built with coils, was allowed to dry to the leather hard stage, and then burnished with a stone and spoon. 
after that the pattern of lines and images were incised into the burnished areas and then it was allowed to fully dry and fired in a kiln. After that, I sawdust fired it. Which gave me this varied surface here, the black smoked area against the reddish clay here. After it was cooled, I applied white kale and wash on it and removed the excess. Coiled pot. Now that you've seen how a coiled pot is constructed and what's involved in the technique, maybe you'll notice some other pots around you, maybe in your environment, or maybe when you go to visit a museum, or maybe you'll see a pot in a friend's house. Is it handmade? Was it made by a machine? Take a closer look. Could they have been made with a coil method? You think they were made by hand? What might be giving you, what might give you some ideas about the fact that it was either made by hand or by, by a machine? Sometimes when we look at a piece that's made by hand, we see that it's slightly irregular. It's not perfectly symmetrical. And I think that's one of the beautiful things about handmade pieces, is that you can tell that it was made by hand, by somebody.